Welcome to Women of the Military podcast. This is a girl's guide to the military series sponsored by Women Veteran Alliance. This week we are focusing on education benefits from the military and specifically the U.S. military because each country has their own benefits and because I'm based in the United States, I'm focusing on the U.S. The thing that most people know about when it comes to education benefits around the U.S. military is the GI Bill. The GI Bill is a way to pay for college after your military service. It is a great benefit for serving in the military, but there are also other educational benefits that you can start using after you graduate from basic training or your tech school. I also interviewed past guest Ashley Gorboljum, who has gained four degrees debt-free through scholarships and programs provided through her military service. So we'll get started with this week's episode after a word from our sponsors. Thank you to our title sponsor, Women Veteran Alliance. Women Veteran Alliance is the premier national network focused on directly impacting the quality of life of women veterans. They do this successfully through transforming the way the community networks bring people and programs directly together. Women Veteran Alliance provides weekly webinars, conferences, scholarships for veteran businesses, and more. Check out their membership options and learn how you can be involved in connecting with women veterans by heading over to their website at www.womenveteransalliance.org. But besides connecting women veterans, Women Veteran Alliance does so much more. Each year, Women Veterans Alliance hosts the Women Veterans Boots and Ball Gowns Gala to support women veterans giving. This year's event will be held Friday, October 14, 2022. This year, they will also be presenting the Beyond the Call of Duty Award in honor of Sergeant Nicole Gee, who died serving in Afghanistan during the evacuation in the summer of 2021. You can learn more about the Boots and Ball Gowns Gala at www.womenveteransgiving.org. Women of the Military Podcast would also like to thank Garrett Sorensen with Markham Wealth for sponsoring this week's episode. Garrett is an Army veteran and a certified financial planner that specializes in helping military families and veterans with their investing, savings, and planning needs. If you are getting ready for a PCS move, retiring, or transitioning to a civilian career, or just need help with making decisions about the SBP or the TSP, Garrett and his team will help you accomplish your goals. So if you're looking to have your current financial plan reviewed, need an update, or would like to start your financial plan, you can email Garrett at garrett.sorenston at markhamwealth.com The email is in the show notes, or you can head over to www.markhamwealth.com. Be sure to mention Women of the Military podcast when you get in touch with Garrett to receive your complimentary financial plan today. Don't forget to head over to www.marcumwealth.com today. We're going to start with the most well-known military benefit, the GI Bill. The GI Bill was created to help World War II veterans. It gave veterans not only money for tuition, but also a stipend to help pay for other expenses. In 1984, the GI Bill was made permanent, and it helped ensure Vietnam veterans could receive a higher education. In 2008, the GI Bill went through another change and became the post-9-11 GI Bill. It expanded benefits and gave service members the opportunity to transfer the GI Bill to their dependents at certain milestones in their career. In 2017, the post-9-11 GI Bill removed the 15-year time limit, becoming the forever GI Bill, allowing veterans to use their post-9-11 GI Bill benefits until their death. There were a number of other expansions, including certain work studies giving veterans more flexibility in and how they use their earned benefits. One thing that's important to note about the GI Bill is that the full GI Bill only applies to active duty members. Reserve and Guard members primarily fall under the GI Bill from 1984, but but they can earn post-9-11 GI Bill benefits if they are activated on active duty for at least 90 days. You can learn more about GI Bill benefits and what you can qualify for at the VA's website. 
I linked directly to the resource in the show notes, but you can also go to va.gov and search for GI Bill benefits. Also check with your service to see if there are any additional education benefits that are available for its members. For example, the Army National Guard can add a kicker to help you pay for your education and other, and other branches offer other programs that can help. But the post-9-11 GI Bill is not the only option for getting your schooling paid for. There are a number of other options for members who are currently serving to help get their school paid for. One of the best programs is tuition assistance, tuition assistance or TA. Currently, TA pays up to $250 per credit hour. According to Military One Source, courses and degree programs may be academic or technical and can be taken from two or four year institutions on installations, off installations, or by distance learning. Your service branch pays your tuition directly to the school. Service members need to first check with an education counselor for specifics involving TA by visiting their local installation's education office or by going online to a virtual education center. Tuition assistance may be used for the following programs. Vocational technical programs, undergraduate programs, graduate programs, independent study, distance learning program. TA can be used by members of the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and Space Force. Members who serve in the Coast Guard have their own specialized programs that help them with off-duty education. One education benefit that you'll receive is going through technical training. Make sure that if you are planning to continue in the career field that you are in when you are in the military, that you check to make there are sure there are no civilian certifications required to continue working in the field. Sometimes tuition assistance can help pay the fee to obtain the certification required. So make sure to go to your education office if you are planning to continue in the career field that you want and need a certification and they can help you figure out if the military can help pay for it. And the last thing I'm going to say about education benefits doesn't have anything really to do with benefits, but it is a great program that I've heard a lot of great things from people who are involved in it, and that's Student Veterans of America. SVA's mission is to act as a catalyst for student veteran success by providing resources, networking support, and advocacy to, through, and beyond higher education. So if you decide to go to school, either while you're on active duty or after you leave the military, make sure to check out Student Veterans of America and get involved in their programs and see what resources they have. They have a great community of members that are helping service members and veterans. So now that we've gone through the basics, let's talk to Ashley Gorbolja Maldonado about her experience of going to school and getting four degrees paid for by the military and other scholarships. Welcome to the show, Ashley. I'm so excited to have you back. This time, talking about education benefits, instead of telling your story, you'll still tell a little bit of your story, but if people want to hear your story, go back and check out episode 29, and and you can hear Ashley's story. But Ashley knows everything and anything there is to know about education benefits. She's like the go-to person, so that's why I wanted to have her on. So thank you so much for being here. Well, much appreciated. I enjoy being a guide on, you know, education benefits and all of the above. I feel like guide on insert here, guide on military spouses, guide on all the other miscellaneous stuff that happens in our community. So it's a real privilege to be back on, Amanda. It's just been so wonderful to watch the podcast grow over the years. And just it's so weird to think I was on season one because I'm just like, wow, how years ago that now? Like, wow, whoa. So much has happened. So much has happened. So much to tell. But uh, just as you mentioned, I'll, I'll give it just a quick synopsis for folks. I encourage them to go back and listen to the episode. Yeah. Wow. What a, what a journey. Uh, I've been in school, I think, majority of my life for the exception of maybe like birth to maybe like, you know, maybe kindergarten. And then I had like one year, maybe like 2018 and 2019, I think was the one year I hadn't been in school. Who think about that? That's crazy. So I started my journey as a National Guard soldier in 2011. My state, uh, Ohio, specifically had a 100% scholarship, which allowed me to go to a state institution at a capped out rate. So I was able to get two degrees, two minors, all of the above. I'm a recipient of over $77,000 in scholarships. On top of that, 
uh, which has allowed me to obtain my master's in me, public health. And um, after, of course, this this airs, and we'll be we talking about it in future and past tenses. I will have graduated with my master's in public leadership, continuing the the four degree debt free scenario, if you will. I've even received internships scholarship internships at equivalent about roughly like $14,000 to come out to DC, which really changed my career trajectory. I was not a recipient of the GI Bill, which we'll talk a little bit about more here. But I will say that as I was working in higher education throughout my time serving over the course of eight years, going to school, working multiple jobs, and one of them being an advisor at a military veterans program in Cleveland, Ohio at a community college. So I work with a lot of individuals from all walks of life with different benefits. And that's how I got this, you know, this nickname of, of being a guide on because people would just find me, they would rally around me and they would just ask questions. It was just like that when I was a, you know, a non-commissioned officer. So it's always exciting to be to be learning every day. I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a lifelong learner, so this is really appropriate for me. You know, I have this trifecta of service between my time as the podcast for American Legion, so we're going to check that out too. And then I'm a business owner. I'm a fractional CMO, and I, I help people understand our military connected community. And then finally, as a, I'm a VA employee as a public affairs officer. So I oversee some really amazing offices and teams across the country to, to help veterans uh, communicate. So it's this crazy journey of education and alignment. But yeah, let's let's get into it. I just wanted to mention that you said that you haven't used the GI Bill. And I think a lot of times when people think of military education benefits, they think of GI Bill and that's kind of where the road stops, which is why I think it's so important to talk to someone like you who who know, like before we started, you were like, and there's this program and this program. And I was like, I didn't know all that stuff. And I think like, if you're considering joining the National Guard, you need to look at what your state offers and what different programs, because we can't cover everything in this episode, but Ashley can support, point you in the right direction on where to go and what sort of thing. So I'll hand it back over to you. I just wanted to break in real quick. Oh, I, that's an excellent plug. I think it's so important that you you look local too. I mean, I looked at active duty and uh, you know I had decided that the army was was for me, just like, you know, when Harry Potter got thrown under the sorting hat, like the army was for me and that's what chose me. So the National Guard was a great option because I wanted to stay close to home. You know, it just, you know, I had a lot of other things going on in my life at that point. So this was a great conduit to getting my education paid for, still like being in the workforce, making myself eligible for benefits, making myself eligible to be a part of veteran service organizations and have all of these things layered on like a beautiful, beautiful cake or an onion, depending on what you like. So, you know, I I say these things because as a Guard member, I was able to use federal tuition assistance as well. And each state will vary. Each state sometimes has additional scholarships for, say, looking at your American Legion or your VFW locally at the state level. There are scholarships regionally. So all of these things I was able to use to offset and pay for my education to include going to the college or university of choice and asking some hard questions and looking at if I qualify for financially, which I didn't. That's why I had to look a little bit deeper. So when you're looking to join you know, the military, think about what your long-term goal is, right? So it's like, I want to pay for my education. You know, I had a lot of soldiers in my ranks that this is this was the end goal. They want to get their education. They were going to do their six years. They were going to be done. Some of them stayed a little longer. Some of them now are outstanding sergeants and leading or commission as officers. But you don't know until you're like halfway through and you're like, oh, you know what? I, I like this. I actually like this a lot. So when you look at the resources, you look at your goals, start making a list. Check it twice. Read Amanda's book, right? So all of these levels of, of things to consider if the military is right for you. And I did a lot of research myself, which is why I resonate with your work, Amanda, because once I realized what was available to me, for me, it was a no brainer. I said, oh, I could do state scholarship. I like, or, I can do the state, state scholarship, do my six years. I ended up staying in an extra two years and doing all of this stuff. And it changed my career trajectory because of my service. So when we talk about educational benefits, yes, we do commonly refer to the GI Bill, which a lot of folks don't know. Uh, Thanks to the American Legion, you have the GI Bill and we continue to fight for the GI Bill. So like things that you can use your GI Bill for are all the ways you can use, it, I suppose. You can use it for a college degree and that's an associate's, that's a bachelor's or, or higher. You've got vocational and technical training, including non-college programs. You've got on-the-job apprenticeship programs. There's licensing and certification reimbursement, national testing programs like the SAT, CLEP or DSST, I believe. There's flight training, corresponding training, work study. 
a really cool thing, I will say, if uh, you find a university or a college that has VA work studies, you can work in tandem on campus in your veteran service office. And that's something I did to make extra money because I was a service member and doing the National Guard scholarship. And I qualified for a benefit called the Montgomery GI Bill Select Reserve, which is a specific guard benefit that if I was part-time, full-time, or just like somewhere in between, I would get paid by how many credit hours I was taking. So 12 was full-time. So I would get like, you know, an extra like 200 bucks a month. And I mean, that was my car payment in college. So these are just these, you know, random little things that you can use your GI Bill for. Um, You know, so you can get paid to do the work study, you qualify to be a part of that work study program. And then there's two other I'm thinking. There's a tuition assistance top-up program and a tutor, I think it's tutorial assistance. Those aren't very common. Let's just be real. Those are not very common. You know, if, if you're going to go to a university or college, it's important by uh, your GI Bill. So if you, if you were an active, if you went active duty, regardless of what service branch, you, you know, with the fulfillment of your contract, you could get up to 100% tuition and fee coverage. Now, if you were a guard or a reserve individual, that maybe was deployed or had some federal time in service, right? So like there's state side orders and then there's federal side orders. If you're active duty, you're all federal. If you're an army reserve, for example, combination, but you're primarily under federal. And if you're the national guard, you're under state, which makes it different for what benefits you can receive. And I highly recommend anybody, you know, speak to say, for example, an American Legion service officer or college, you know, certification and advisor role in a military services center. You can go to the VA. There's so many ways to ask all these questions. But, you know, if, if you're, you know, you're like, oh, I really want GI Bill, you know, you, you serve the term of your contract, you get up to 100% tuition and free coverage or and fee coverage. You've got monthly housing allowance. So depending on where you're at in the country, there's a, you know, a prorated amount that will assist you in your living expenses while you're going to school full time or part time or, or online, which a lot of changes have happened um, with, with COVID. It, it taught us a lot of lessons. So that and uh, let's see, a thousand dollar book stipend. So you got like books and supplies, and then you have the ability to transfer your GI Bill to spouse and dependents. Now, I will say, always do your homework on that one because you want to make sure that you qualify and fulfill your full contract to do that. And they have changed some of the rules that you have to have like it's like six or eight good years or something like that now. So those are things you have to just kind of be cognizant of. If you're like, oh, I want to join and say you're say you're a little bit older, right? Like, and you're like, oh, I'm not going in fresh 18 and you decide, hey, I'm going to go to school and then I'm going to go in the service, which happens. I had a lot of friends like that. They're like, oh, I'm going to get the GI Bill transferred to my kids. But you got to make sure that, you know, your contract fulfills the obligation, which allows you to transfer that. So there's things to think about, which is why you should read Amanda's book. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, my husband transferred his GI Bill to our kids and he had to serve another four years. So beyond being like serving the extra time to get to be able to transfer it, you also incur a service commitment. And so, and it's always changing. So I don't even know what it is. That was a while ago when we had kids and he was able to transfer it. And so it is something that you need to realize, like it is a great benefit, but it also is a way to get you to serve longer, which is why it's a benefit that is offered. They'll get you. They'll be like, hey, but you're so close. And they're like, ah. Or they'll say, hey, there's a school opportunity, but you have to be able to hold the rank or the, you know, whatever that title and rank is for two years or, you know, there's some retention strategies, be advised, you know, that stuff happens. But, you know, as you're selecting, you know, a job for whatever branch you choose, thinking about does that align with my long-term goal, right? Like if I want to go in and become a public affairs officer, right, I have to have certain scores on my ASVAB. And if I go to Dymphos, which is in Fort Meade, that's just a big fancy, you know, communication school, if you will. We learn to write, read, produce, do all kinds of things, right? Like what's the transferability of those skills? Like you may not necessarily like walk away with a four-year degree, but you'll walk away with four, six, eight, and however many years of experience you have. And you could, you know, pursue your education at night or during the day or weekends or whatever it looks like. If you chose active duty or guard reserve and say you went that job route. So then you could say, okay, I want to do this. And does this align with my goals? How do I get there? And that's when you start, you know, doing that reverse planning. So, hey, if I join my state, I wait for this job, I ask the recruiter, here are my top three jobs, I get the scores, and then you can start to just kind of plan what that trajectory looks like. And, you know, 
even after years of service and now, you know, being out as a, as a veteran, but also a military spouse, like watching, you know, my husband and his friends, like ask me questions and go through some of this process or go to night school or have started businesses in tandem uh, with their National Guard service or, you know, I know active duty folks who are, who are doing a lot of great stuff. But yeah, there's, there's so many things too. I had a lot of friends who went to Ivy League schools. There are some great programs like Service to School that will help you. It's a nonprofit. They will help you uh, with the application process. They will walk you through all the guides. They've got the connections. Uh, and a lot of those schools are sometimes yellow ribbon schools, which is just a, a way of saying that they've partnered with the Veterans Administration, Veterans Affairs, to help offset the costs that aren't covered by the post 9 11 GI Bill. So the post 9 11 GI Bill, just think of it as like this this cap. And you know, you're you're usually you're going to be fine at like state institutions, but private institutions there's a current cost. So some of these schools will partner up and they'll say, hey, we will help you know cover you know you know, certain amount of coursework. So for example, like if, if you're going to school less than full-time student, you know, and you only get a percentage, a percentage of your GI Bill. So you would only be attending like half-time student. You would get half the like housing rate. If you're at a school that has the yellow ribbon program, they're covering a little bit more of, of that tuition for you, or they've got scholarships or grants set aside specifically for veterans. Here's the thing. A lot of people don't ask. They just get their financial aid and they're like, okay. Or I know veterans who don't don't even try for financial aid. They just think, oh, I have GI Bill, I'm good. Like you can do both. The worst thing they could say is no. But if they came back and said, hey, you qualify for a bunch of grants, great. And that's how you can sit down and, and plan your coursework and not feel super pressured to be taking 21 credits a semester. Don't murder yourself, people. I did that once. It's not a great. It's not great for your mental health. <laughs> but like, how do you pace yourself, utilizing the resources and the tools that you have? Yeah, and that's a a good. Um... The post 9-11 GI Bill is great because you get some money for housing, but like that money for housing only goes so far because your tuition isn't your only bill and your house is not your only bill. And so if you can get grants or other support scholarships, it can help you not have to work and be able to go to school full time and get your degree done because that is a challenge that we've talked about on the podcast, especially with the Montgomery GI Bill, because you didn't get that housing allowance. And so you kind of were like stuck (laughs) where you were like, I have the money to go to school, but I can't afford to eat or live anywhere. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's like ramen and, you know, blue mac and cheese with like the, the tear off lid. Like I've been there, done that. And, you know, you brought up a good point. So like Mo- the Montgomery GI Bill. So you'll have your you, your 9-11 GI Bill, which is very commonly used. And most service members will elect into that benefit because it just, it makes more sense than the Montgomery GI Bill, which you have to like put money into. So I've only really seen that with like my first wave of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. And really like after just like a a certain point in time, and I I can't pinpoint the exact year, but there was just like a huge switch because it, it just made, like I said, they just made it so encompassing that like, it was just the better choice, right? It's like when you've got all those stacked up benefits, like the, you know, hundred percent tuition, fee coverage. I mean, right. You just couldn't do it. Like I know people who use the Montgomery and they were like going to community college, like part-time and it was still paying out pretty well. And they were like close to home. So there's strategies that if that was something you did put money into, but know that there are some like time limits on those benefits. And I I don't want to say the wrong number, but I'm not mistaken. There was a time limit on how you use the Montgomery, which is why a lot of people aren't using that. And they've elected and rolled over into the 911. GI Bill if they so qualify for it. Yeah, the it was 10 years after you got after and then it, the post 9/11 was a 15 but then I think when President Trump was in office he changed it to the forever GI Bill. So, which is nice because as a mom of young children, the fact that I don't have a clock ticking on when I have to use those benefits and like in 10 years is coming up very fast. And I'm like, and my kids are still little and the pandemic and everything. So it's like my plan to go back to school when my youngest went to kindergarten didn't pan out, partly because we're moving the summer and everything. But what about if you're, you went to school while you were still in the military? I know you were doing part time with the National Guard, but what other benefits are there for service members who are either on active duty or in the National Guard and they want to get their degree and they want to start now and they don't want to wait until after they get out. So here's the thing. Um, You could, and I I recommend this, uh, 
depending on where you're stationed, right? So if, if we'll take active duty, for example, depending on where you're stationed, you can look on, on look for online programs. You can look for uh, community colleges, local. I know plenty of people who have done this, who are still, you know, wearing boots. They would take like a class or two. Um, they would utilize their, uh, say, federal tuition assistance. So for example, we'll, we'll use Army because I know Army uh, very well. And Air Force has their own tuition assistance. So Army individual, and you're like, hey, I want to go back to school, but you're still on, you still have your duty day. So you would, you know, go to work. You could find a program that's online. You can utilize, you know, that, that tuition assistance program. You could probably pay a little bit out of pocket. You can check with the colleges, see if they've got any grants or scholarships, right? So when we talk about scholarships, these are something like it will help you like take some of these like harder, very um, basic like gen ed classes, right? So you have to have your maths, your sciences, uh, your English 101s, right? So why not take them at community college and make sure that those credits transfer over? So you'll have a joint service transcript and then the Air Force has their Air Force transcript. I know specifically with the Air Force, they've got like an Air Force kind of community college setting so that you can, you know, you could take courses and you have to register and you typically have to check with your leadership or your supervisor, your manager, whoever is overseeing you to make sure that like it's not going to interfere with your, with your day job and that that way it's noted that you are continuing to professionally develop yourself because that will set you apart from your peers and will, you know, give you an opportunity to rise among and, you know, get promoted. That was a very similar situation that I had in the guard. They're like, oh, she's in, she's in college. She's smart. She can handle it. Next thing you know, I'm like instructing, <laughs> like I'm doing these things and I'm getting this, I'm getting the experience and then I'm pairing it with the, the theory. Like those are the, those are the quick things on the top of my head for service members who are still in. I'm sure there, there are plenty of things that one can do. And but yeah, I mean, you can still pursue those things. You can start making connections while you're still in service. You can reach out to colleges and ask questions and really start planning because most of the problems occur like when you're at that two-year mark before you get out or those 180 days and now you're being like you know given the fire hose of information which is a lot if you only did either four years or 20 years this is a lot of information which is why this is like a snippet conversation but you know if say for example you got out um of the service after after 20 plus years, or you were, you know, uh, medically retired, there's a lot of different situations. You know, now you've got retirement benefits, you've got, uh, say you're, say you're a you know, service connect disabled veteran, now you qualify for veteran readiness and employment, and you can use that before you use your GI Bill or vice versa, like you can do it in either order. So, you know, they've got five tracks, if I'm not mistaken. And let's see, they've got a re reemployment track. So that would be like if, you know, you're a veteran with service connect disability, the reemployment track uh, can help you return to your former job or support your employer meeting your needs. So I've seen some folks in the guard who had that kind of service uh, or they had a job and then say they took a full time position and then they went back to that job or they wanted to retrain, for example, rapid. Uh, let's see. So there's five. See, so it's reemployment track, rapid access to employment track, self employment track, employment through long term service track. Let's see, long term services, and then independent living track. So, like, independent living would be you may qualify for services that help you live independently as possible. Employment through long term services would be, you know, helping you get educational training. So, that's another form of, of going to college and university. Self employment, if you're interested in wanting to start your own business. Rapid access employment track helps you with like a job search, uh, you know, and even as you get out too, there's a benefit. Uh, it's called Chapter 36. It's an educational and career counseling that you would get as you're leaving active service soon or discharge within a year. And that's a VA program. And I encourage everyone, you know, to go to va.gov and look at the VA benefits and healthcare. There's some really great well-organized information, how to apply to those benefits. Um, so there is, you know, that is the source of where everything that I'm, I'm speaking to you about today, like that is where it is all at. That's an example. If you, if you get out, right. If you're a really long-term planner, like myself, I'm very operational. <laughs> if I had stayed in, I'd have like, you know, the retirement, depending on like my disability rating, which right now even if it's eight years in, like I'm a 70% service connected disabled veteran. So like I get benefits monthly. I get VA healthcare. I have used all my possible education benefits. And like I tell you this as like a, an overall just story of how to utilize benefits. But it's such a, it's just a really great, 
Like there's just so many things to take advantage of. And I think a lot of folks just get overwhelmed. Yeah, for sure. It's like you're talking a foreign language. It makes some amount of sense. And then sometimes there's like acronyms and you're like, I don't know what's going on. But that I feel like you've given us a really good like overview of how many different benefits there are available and that you need to reach out and get help if you have questions, which I have a mentorship program that you can sign up if you are interested in talking to a woman veteran and getting advice from her, or you can go to the American Legion or other service organizations that can help. And one program that I think that it is really cool that veterans have gotten involved in when they go to school after leaving service is Student Veterans of America. And I know that you're involved in it. So can you tell people what it is and how it's helped you in your journey? So while I was on campus, so this was like 2014, 2015, um, I got involved. I was, like I said, it was a, a VA work study. It's on campus. I'm working. I'm in the guard. And we were like, how do we continue to have an organization where veterans are, you know, the main, you know, folks? Like, how do we reach out to more veterans? And we stumbled upon Sue Veterans of America, which is a chapter led uh, organization. It's a nonprofit. They provide resources, tools, and camaraderie for veterans on campus. So these are like, these are just some phenomenal leaders all over the country who are doing community based projects. Uh, So there's a lot of overlap. Uh, with the Legion. So as you can imagine, while I was at the university uh, doing the VA work study, I said, hey, we want to start this chapter. They were like, hey, let's start a, a campus university, America, like let's let's start a campus American Legion post. So in tandem, I was doing both of those things in like 2015. So this amazing Student Measures of America leadership program that has a uh, one of the largest gathering of just student veterans every, anywhere in the country, you know, annually, typically in every January. And there's just resources and employment. There's leadership workshops and seminars. And then I had this duality of being an American Legion member that was in leadership positions and was able to really make an impact in my local community. So raising money, partnerships. I had, (laughs) I was like 21. I was just overwhelmed. I'm like this brand new sergeant in the, you know, the National Guard. I'm these leaders in both of these organizations helping people better understand what's available to them. So Student Veterans of America is an extension of opportunity and camaraderie on campus. Whereas like American Legion is like the next level up and a natural stepping stone for a lot of active servant leaders that are out there. Because many of us who you know, decide to join the service. There is a a joint mission and a sense of understanding with the people that you've served with. No matter what branch, there's just something that unites us. And that camaraderie is something that can be a bit hard to replace when we get out. So having organizations like this exist helps us reconnect with our roots um, and service. So that's a little bit about Student Measures of America and just a bit of my journey and how I got involved with both. And now it's wild to think this, this crazy journey of mine is now I'm an advocate in all of these spaces. Uh, never, ever would I have thought if you went back and told me at 18 that when I raised my right hand that I would be a national, you know, I'd, I'd be a, a podcast host for the largest veteran service organization in the country, or I would be working at the VA impacting millions of veterans by either telling people yes or no, or that's a good idea, or let's try that again, shall we? Or, you know, even being a business owner. I have been provided so many opportunities and tools because I just ask questions. I, you know, I found that mentorship. So I highly recommend if you have an opportunity, uh, work, work with Amanda. She, she knows and has just this wonderful network of, of amazing military women across all branches, different stories and experiences that will, that will resonate. So if that is something of interest, I, I highly recommend it. Thanks, Ashley. I think that this episode was supposed to be about education benefits, but it also touched on like the benefit of the veteran community and the opportunities that you have. And like, we didn't talk about specific things, but you mentioned student veteran, or I guess I asked about student veterans of America. And that's just one of many different veteran organizations. There's so many different opportunities. So this episode is focused on educational benefits, but if it could be longer, it would be about all the benefits of being a service member. And I think you did a really good job of tying how you saying yes to joining the military changed your life in so many ways that you never expect. Hard to imagine anything else at this point. I have no idea. If I could go back and tell myself anything, I'd say just keep going. Can't it will watch me? Make it happen, girl. 
because everything has happened for a reason. I'm really satisfied with that. Well, thank you so much for your time and for the information. And I'm going to link to all the resources that Ashley mentioned in this episode and maybe a few more while I do research along the way. So all the show notes will have all the information that you need. And thank you so much for being on the show, Ashley. Of course. Always a pleasure, Amanda. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. I really hope that it helped you in your journey to the military. And if you want to learn more about joining the military, please check out my new book, A Girl's Guide to Military Service. And I'll have a link so you can pre-order in the show notes. And I also want to give another shout out to our sponsors for the series, Women Veteran Alliance, Jay Volbrecht Consulting, Garrett Sorensen with Markham Wealth, Photography by Trish Algrea Smith, Serve Like Her, and Nomadies Collections. You can learn more about our sponsors at the Girl's Guide to the Military landing page, which I have linked to in the show notes where you can also find every episode from the series. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you'll come back next week.